here. Well, my next guest is perhaps the greatest sports figure ever to come from the Tri-Cities. And he's coming back in July. I'm talking to Steve Spurrier, 1966 Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, really quarterback of record, I would say, of the 72 uh, 49ers that uh, went far in the playoffs as well. And uh, But you're, you're coming in. I know uh, you were a great three-sport athlete at Science Hill uh, back in the early 60s, winning a couple of back-to-back -back state baseball titles, and there's going to be a reunion here in July. Uh, how did this reunion come about, and uh, what's bringing you back to uh, Johnson City, Steve Spurrier? Yeah, well, I usually try to get back once a year anyway, and uh, we're having actually... One of our 55 high school reunions, just our class. And I was talking to some of the, the baseball players. And I said, you know what? We've never had a reunion of the 62 63 state championship baseball team. Science here, we have back to back. So we, we're putting it together. Uh, Tommy Hager, teammate of mine in Johnson City, and the athletic director at Science Hill, Keith Turner, are, are the local people involved. And we're just trying to get the word out to all the guys who played. It's going to be July 20, and uh, on July 21, we have our class reunion. But, yeah, I'll tell you what, it was, it was sort of amazing, unbelievable that uh, in baseball, we won all the close games, just all of them, as we made our run through the tournaments uh, in 62-63. Uh, basketball and football, we lost our share of the close ones. And... Uh, we didn't win any state titles, but uh, we've, we've had very good teams there. But so we're going to try to put the, a reunion together and uh, get the old guys back. Well, uh, let me ask you, because I know I've talked to you before, and you've said that of your high school accomplishments, it's your feats on the diamond that you are most the pr most proud of. I don't think you ever lost a game as a pitcher at Science Hill, and, you know, as we said, a couple of back-to-back -back state titles there, but, uh, you know, what do you, I guess would be your most memorable moment pitching for the Hilltoppers? Yeah, well, well both those years, uh, we were fortunate like I said, I, I usually didn't pitch until the tournament times okay. or mid-season. Uh, I'd come off of uh, basketball and sort of ease into it. And our coach, Coach Brawls, uh, he sort of just got me ready as, as we went through the year. Uh, but I, I would alternate pitch with Lonnie Lowe uh, our junior year and then senior year, Bud Oxenine. We'd pitch every other game and so forth. So, uh um, yeah, I was pretty. I was pretty fortunate as a pitcher, uh, Marky. We didn't. We didn't lose any games, and uh, and that's how we won. I guess a couple of state championships because we uh, and we our guys would make a play, somebody get a hit, somebody do something, and the other team would leave guys on base all the time, and it just it just seemed to keep working out for us. Well, Lonnie was, uh, of course, for many years the general manager of the Johnson City Cardinals, and his son Chris is actually someone that I played high school baseball with at university, and he is the only player from University High School, Lonnie Lowe's son, to ever play professional baseball. He played briefly in the Phillies chain. But, uh, so, I mean, this was a, a, another great athletic family, if you will, as well as the Spurriers. Now, were there any other players on that team that uh, went on to, say, play professional baseball or have, uh, you know, some no, college we scholarships? Have, no, we didn't have any pro players. Uh, our catcher, uh, Chief Tipton, uh, went to UT played for the Vols in college baseball. Uh, Lonnie Lowe pitched out at Milligan. I think you may have con him confused with another Lowe. Uh, Lonnie uh, did not have a son. Uh, he had daughters. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, Lonnie was a real good friend of mine, and uh, he's not with us anymore. But he was uh, he was uh, uh, one of the best pitchers to ever, ever pitch in Tennessee high school baseball, I think. All right. I, uh, well, we've got that. We'll get that there, uh, clarified. But I do want to ask this. That era at Science Hill, I mean, I'm thinking 1962 state championship, and one of your predecessors at Science Hill would have been Ernie Bowman. He was playing in the World Series in 1962 for the San Francisco Giants. Was that any inspiration? What was that like? to be a baseball player at Science Hill, and one of your, you know, somebody, admittedly, somebody you probably didn't know, he was a few years ahead of you, but you could see someone 
who not that long ago was a Hilltopper and was on base when Chuck Hiller hit his Grand Slam in the World Series that year. What was that like? Uh, well, we, we were proud he was from Johnson City, but uh, no, he didn't have any influence uh, on our team. Our, our team was a bunch of guys that just, uh, we played Little League ball against each other, and then they group league 13, 14, 15 against each other. And then when we got to high school, we were, we were on the same team. And that was probably oh seven or eight of us. And uh, we were just good friends all the way up through. And uh, for some reason, we just mentally uh, had something about baseball that we, we thought we were pretty good. <laughs> and we thought we could beat everybody. Uh, we didn't know how we did it all the time. But it, it just seemed to work out. You know, a key hit there. And the other team would leave a bunch of guys on base. And uh, just a lot of a lot of good things happened for us. And that's, that's how you win state championships. And especially back to back. I mean, you got a lot of good breaks going. We had some help from above, too. Uh, we, had a, we had probably a sincere Christian bunch of young guys <laughs> that, uh, that did some good training. And we got some help from above a lot of times. What would be a case of what game do you recall that you might have had uh, touched by an angel, a seeing eye single or something that went through for a hit or a, a key error by the, the other game, team? But, uh, yes. Yeah, the game that really started it, Marky, was. Uh, my junior year, before we'd won one, we're playing Kingsport, the finals of the region in Knoxville. They'd beaten us 13 to 1, 13 to 2, twice in the regular season. I think it was only two regular season games we'd lost. And uh, we got in the finals of the region, and uh, Coach Brawls let me pitch against them that night. And uh, the game rocked around, and uh, they got the bases loaded, and they're up 4 to 2, and they're getting ready to blow us out. Uh, they had like a team batting average near 400 that year. They they were beating everybody by big scores. And uh, so they, they're up 4-2. They got the bases loaded. Nobody out. And the guy hit a one-hopper right back to me, pitching. And we went home to first for a double play. And I think the next guy struck out. So we're down only 4-2. to two. Uh, We claw back, tied up. And we go into the last inning and... Uh, Tony Bowman, probably the fastest player we got, was on first and two outs. And I was at bat and managed to hit a little soft line drive out to right field that hit. And uh, and Tony scored all the way from first. And uh, so we're up 5-4, and they got a guy on third. Uh, but we got him out, a uh, guy flew out to center. And we win that with 5-4, and then go on and win the state in, uh, in Nashville. Uh, beat Memphis Messick that year, and I really think that helped us the next year as far as mentally just, hey, we don't have to do this, let's go do it again, fellas, and uh, we were able to do it back to back. You've made Tony Bowman out to be country slaughter in the 1946 World Series, scoring from first base on a hit to win the game right there. That's uh, that's very impressive. Yeah, I, I got to first base, and I was just saying, run, Tony, run. <laughs> I, I wasn't worried about that, because I just I stood there and watched him score from first base, huh? Now, you were also one of the uh, first students, I, I, it wasn't your senior year, but weren't you in uh, some of the first students to uh, actually attend classes at the Liberty Bell campus, away from the old Science Hill, the actual Science Hill building that had been involved, uh, I guess, in the 50s and beforehand? Weren't you part of that move? What was that like? Yeah, we went up there in January of my sophomore year, so I spent... Uh, uh, you know, up through uh, December at the old school downtown of my sophomore year. And then we all moved. Oh, they were ready for us. Uh, they moved up. And uh, we, we didn't skip a beat. Uh, everything was uh, on go. Just a, a, new, a new basketball gym, new practice facility uh, for football and so forth. But uh, it wasn't any big, uh, big deal to us. You, there couldn't have been any of the businesses that are there now on North Rhone Street, just a couple down the hill, if you will. That that had to be barren at the time. I'm guessing. I mean, I'm I'm wondering what what was there uh, on North Rhone Street down the hill, if you will, in the early '60s. Well, there was uh, the John Sevier Hotel, obviously. Okay, was, yeah, that's downtown. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it was it was a good old place there, but we definitely needed a, a new high school, and the one they built there has has really worked out very well. Yeah, it's been there obviously for fifty odd years. Talking to Steve Spurrier, uh, he's going to be the new coach of the Orlando franchise in the AA. F, uh, the Alliance of American Football. You're returning to pro football to coach because I remember uh, you tutoring John Reeves with the T Tampa Bay Bandits back in the day. And uh, now I, I think that this is going to kind of be, from what I'm being told, sort of a triple A to the NFL and such. Uh, you're you're going to be the coach of the Orlando franchise, but uh, when do you think you're going to have your roster take hold uh, there with the Orlando franchise? Okay, Marky, yeah, the, uh, the Alliance of American Football, uh, when I learned about it, they told me what the deal was, and, uh, and basically it's a four to five month a year job. We come in in, uh, either December, January, and we start playing February, March, April, uh, TV contract with CBS, and basically the players will be the ones that get cut from the NFL, uh, this coming year, or maybe years past, uh, so uh, every NFL team has about 90 players right now, and they'll mm -hmm. cut down to 60. So that's 30 per team, so that's over 900 players that we can draw from. And, uh, and there'll be some tryouts uh, for players and so forth. And it is it is a little bit of a minor league of professional football, but uh, we think if we can put a product on the field uh, that, that the, people, the people have proven they will watch football on television, and so we got to put a good product out there to, to get them watching and, and coming to the games. But, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I, they told me I could have the Florida gig, <laughs> the one in Orlando. And I said, well, count me in. I, I need to go coach somebody real soon. And, uh, obviously, uh, most most of the coaches that will be in this league are guys that are available right now. We're not giving up big-time jobs to come coach here. Uh, but there's plenty of really, really good ball players out there, and I think a bunch of excellent coaches, too. So I, I think everybody's fired up about this uh, new alliance of American football. So it won't be in competition like the USFL, but rather more like the World League only played in the United States. One of the things I found very interesting, and I know I heard an earlier interview where you were kind of uh, intrigued by this, is that the league will own all the teams. Now, I've been involved with some minor league pro sports, and that hasn't necessarily worked because when you have one owner, what sometimes happens is that the weaker teams at the end are feeding all their players to the better teams, if you will. So if you have got a last place team or something, uh, you know, and this has historically happened when all the teams yeah, have there's a group okay. That owns all the teams. Yeah, but what I'm saying well, is that it's a, it's a group. Uh, Charlie Ebersol uh, mm -hmm. is sort of the head guy of it, and, and they know they need to try to distribute the players as fairly as possible. Sure. Uh, nobody wants to see a fifty to three game or something like that. So. We believe it's going to be very competitive. Uh, we trust our people, and we'll have somewhat of a draft. But uh, the reason you don't need individual owners is because one of them will not follow the rules, and he's going to spend a bunch of money just to try to win. So they're going to try to keep the spending in line uh, where this league does not go busted after one or two years and uh, and make a go of it. And I think there, people will watch football in February, March, April. I think uh, we can prove that. But, you know, sort of like the uh, the NBA right now, Cleveland and the Warriors are going at it. Mm -hmm. uh, but when they're finished, uh, the women's league, the WNBA sure. plays. They're playing in the summertime. So the seasons now of sports, uh, they, they've moved around all over the place in the calendar year. And we believe if we've got some good teams and good players going at it and well-coached games, uh, we, we can make a go with this alliance. But is there anything that will, uh, like a rule in that, uh, say you've got an 0 10 team, and I know a lot of times, you know, th uh, that they will trade players, the better players, to the better teams at that point. Uh, I mean, in my dealings with team with leagues that have all one owners that's been the case i mean it was the way it was in the national league in the 19th century in fact is there any rule involved that will sort of keep that good quarterback on an owen 10 team still with the owen 10 team to try to win those last two games let's say i mean are there rules in place for that no i don't think that's going to happen okay But that, that has not been brought up. Uh, what's been brought up is uh, trying to get territorial players now. 
Sure. For example, if Tim Tebow wants to uh, drop baseball, if it doesn't work out, uh, certainly we got a place for him in Orlando. If Johnny Manziel wants to play in our league, I, I'm sure the uh, San Antonio team, I hear they're going to get one uh, possibly. Uh, then he would certainly be welcome to play there. So we're, we're trying to you know, get players with their schools in their areas for attendance, certainly. Will you miss the kickoff? You and Mike Tomlin, yeah. All the different two-point plays, because you go for two every time now, and there is no such thing as an extra point. Uh, there's no onside kick. Uh, it's the same as fourth and ten. You put it on your own 35. If you make it, you keep going. If you don't, the team gets the ball. So I like that rule. Okay. And uh, we'll try to play faster also. 30 seconds uh, between plays instead of 40 seconds. And I think only about two reviews are going to try to cut back on all the reviewing and keep the game uh, moving. And uh, ticket prices are 30 to 40 bucks, from what I understand. So we're not trying to rob people. We're trying to put on a good product and uh, enjoy some competition out there. Well... It, I am excited about it, and it does sound very intriguing. Uh, you know, I know that the uh, cities that you're putting the teams in, places like Memphis, Orlando, you mentioned San Antonio, I know they're starved for football, especially pro football teams. So I'm intrigued to see how they will react, especially if they do have a lot of Florida Gators, a lot of Golden Knights from Central Florida, you know, guys from, I don't know, the Stetson's Pioneer League team uh, coming out and uh, playing for this, trying to, uh, you know, make the NFL uh, in, in the future and all that. But anyway, it's been nice talking to you. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to join me here on Tri-City Sports Now. And yeah, we're going to try to get the word out throughout Johnson City and spread this uh, yeah, around. Back-to-back -back state champs are getting together. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Coach. Talk to you Ste soon. Bye-bye. Steve Spurrier, Tri-City Sports Now. Back with Jerry Bonkowski after this.